All right, so before we step into the 3D environment, I just wanted to take a quick minute to show you what I'm using to control the inverse kinematic control points of the in-game avatar. Uh, I'm using Razer Hydra controllers for the hands, as well as various game interaction capabilities. They are game controllers, so they have joysticks on them and buttons so that I can interact with objects. I can also perform detailed gestures with these modeled hands. Um, and I'm also using an Oculus Rift headset, which uh, controls the avatar's head and neck, as well as what the user is seeing in, in true 3D. Alright, so let's step into the 3D environment and I'll show you around the Cisco network. I also wanted to point out that everything I'm about to demo here is all stuff I've done on my own personal time, uh, weekends and evenings. I just wanted to make that clear in case any Cisco co-workers are wondering why I'm working on 3D environment stuff. Okay, so let me jump right into the 3D world. This is the Oculus Rift. So here we are in 3D space. Now this is how the video is typically rendered for the Oculus Rift. Uh, if I step into the avatar, you can see the body. Um, however, because I plan on sharing this video online, I'll render the video this way instead. So what you're seeing in front of you is a network topology drawn out on the ground. This is a topology I had authored in VM Maestro user interface, and I brought it into the 3D space, and each node of the network is then being represented by a 3D object. Don't pay too close attention to the actual objects representing the NOSs. They might not make sense, but that's all I had available at the time. Alright, so let's walk around the network for a little bit. Actually, let me go to the edge. And the idea here is that you can interact with these uh, 3D objects and their state in-game will be synchronized against the depository. And so the virtualized NOSs, the network operating systems, will react accordingly. For example, if I come up to this device and I hit the reset button, wherever the reset button happens to be, <laughs> um, the virtualized NOS for this router would actually cycle down and back up. And as it's coming up, for example, uh, the current boot up state could be put back into the depository and the in-game objects would then represent perhaps the LED states accordingly. You can interact with objects using a number of different tools, for example rubber mallet and try to fix the problem this way. Sometimes the rubber mallet isn't quite powerful enough so you'd need something bigger such as a BFG. Uh, this was recommended by David Ward. Um, BFG stands for Big Something Gun. I'm not sure what the F stands for. So let me stand back a little bit, change my perspective, and I'll hold the gun gangster style. <laughs> and let's see if I can take aim, and there we go. And then you can instantiate Cisco hardware in place. and then maybe just clear out the debris. Instead of simply representing the hardware state information by the depository, I thought it'd be more interesting to show you uh, custom data being sent across the depository. So what I'm doing here is on the left, of course, is the Oculus Rift's viewport, and on the right, I'm actually able to show you the Oculus Rift's location on the canvas and the head tracking information also being represented in 2D uh, form. So as I'm walking over these network connections, VM Maestro does a good job of performing obstacle avoidance on these objects in 2D space. Here what I'm demonstrating is just how rapidly that information is being transferred from the game. Uh, the Oculus Rift's uh, head tracking information, the head rotation specifically, is being transferred 
in real time every single time a frame is being rendered in the game through a it happens to be a C sharp script it could have been Python or Java or JavaScript and being transferred into the topository or the topology model service and it's specifically pushing it into an extension of an icon that represents the avatar, the in-game avatar. So the powerful aspect of this is that this this uh, information is of course not typical information inside of a network. Uh, I've added a custom extension to that element that keeps track of the head rotation as a float and VM Maestro just constantly monitors that float value and updates the rendering on screen based on that value just to show that it doesn't have to be uh, topology specific information being shoved into the data model um, that means Keratin Live for example the real-time uh, network analytics tool could be populating information such as perhaps network traffic or the bandwidth happening over given links on your network and in visualizations either the web-based editor or the VM Maestro editor could then render that traffic in real time on your screen or it's also very feasible for uh, teacher-student environments where you want the teacher to drive the data model but you don't want your students to just necessarily be watching a video of you doing those changes they're actually observing the data model through their own editor the web-based editor or the downloaded client editor so anyway that's what I was demonstrating here If I switch my perspective in the 3D game just to show you the overview, you can now see the same effective information being rendered in 2D and 3D. You've probably noticed though that as the avatar is walking over the connections, it is moving out of the way on the topology editor inside of VM Maestro, but not in the 3D canvas. That's because I used a bit of a trick. I cut and pasted that graphic of the topology onto the ground in the 3D space. However, I can switch to the actual topology editor inside of a web browser rendered on the floor inside of the 3D space. Um, unfortunately, I'm still not synchronizing the current state of the topology via the topository. So what you're looking at here is the same layout of the topology, the original topology, but it's not observing data model changes. That will be my next step, but for now I just wanted to show you that you can effectively just perform the same type of topology editing actions as you would inside of VM Maestro entirely via web browser. And this web browser happens to be rendered in 3D space. But for now let me switch back to the pre-painted flat representation a static representation of that same topology uh, because I wanted to show you that I can not only send information via the topository I can also receive it dynamically so if I go here and do a receive now inside of VM Maestro on the right hand side if I take any of these icons and move them across the floor such as perhaps this one well actually yeah let me grab one that's in <laughs> my field of vision. Let me just move my avatar so that I'm facing that way. There we go, so that I can see it in the field of vision. There we go. So now in 3D space, take a look at this uh, rack of routers. If I go on the 2D canvas and move that icon across the floor somewhere else, it will move in 3D space as well. So if I switch my perspective back to the in-game avatar, and move maybe that shelf over a little bit towards the towards the towards myself in 3D space. It'll come right towards me, and so on and so forth. So effectively, this becomes kind of a topology positioning system, perhaps. <laughs> and the next step will be to allow the actual topology editing actions as displayed on the. 2D canvas here to also represent these same transitions. So this icon would have moved over here. This icon would have moved over here. You get the idea. I just didn't have time to implement that part yet. And that's about it. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what the topository is all about.
Cheers.